Hello everyone and welcome to Cheesy Code. In this lecture we will learn about intents, what is their purpose. Also we will learn to handle button click inside an Android app. We will see how we can write custom code inside button click. So let's get started. If you are following this tutorial series, you must have noticed that we have discussed scenarios related to a single activity like a single screen. Now normally in an app there are multiple activities and based on user interaction we go from one screen to another like from one activity to another. So for example if we talk about WhatsApp, when we click on our friend's name, then a new activity opens up and it shows us the chat that we had with that friend. Now to move from one activity to another, we use intents. Now let's take an example. Here there is an activity, it has a button. Now if I want to open up activity number 2 by clicking this button on activity number 1, I'll create an intent object on click of this button and that object will be sent to the Android operating system. It will understand the intent and it will open the activity number 2 on the basis of the intent I have created. Now before digging deep inside the intent topic, let's see how we can handle button click inside an Android app. Now here you can see that this is my activity underscore main file. There is a relative layout present in it. Now I am adding a button inside this relative layout. I am giving width and height as wrap content. And I'm specifying text as button 1 to make it visible. Now I'm specifying an ID to this button so that this ID can be used inside the code. Now here you can see that I have a specified activity underscore main that is referring to that XML file I was editing. Now let's access the button. Now I'll create a variable of type button. I'll name it as btn action. And I'll use an error specific method that is find view by ID. It takes the ID of the element that we want to get. So here I'm specifying r.id.btn action. Now this find view by id returns a view, but our variable is of type button, so we have to cast it. So for that I'll press alt plus enter key and it will be casted. Now in this variable btn action I'm getting the button instance. Now I'm going to set on click listener for this button. This listener will execute some custom code that I will write whenever somebody clicks that button. Now I will write btn action dot set on click listener. Now inside this I will write new on click listener. Now as soon as I write down and press enter, Android Studio automatically created an on click event for me so that I can write code inside it that will be executed whenever user clicks this btn action. Let's understand what is happening here using an image. So here there is a concept of listener and handler. Whenever user clicks a button, the on click listener listens that particular event and then commands the handler which is the custom code to execute some functionality. So ultimately whenever user clicks a button, listener listens it and the handler executes some code. So if I explain this code again, here the listener is on click listener and it will execute the on click event that is the handler here and I will write custom code inside of it that will be executed whenever a user clicks this button. Now the custom code can be anything. I can open up an activity, I can insert some data into DB or I can get a service call. I can do anything in the name of custom code. So that's up to me. So let's summarize this button click handling. So first we find the button using find view by id. It returns an object of button. Now for that button we set on click listener which listens the interaction from the user. Then we write some custom code inside the on click event. So that's how we handle button click inside an Android app. Now let's get back to intents. So basically any communication that we do with the Android system is handled with the help of intents. For example, there is a long going DB call or we want to play some music in the background or we want to open up an activity. That's all done using intents. They are of two types, explicit intent and implicit intents. The basic difference between these two intents is that in explicit intent we specify some component name or id to the android system in case of implicit intent we expect android system to help us out by prompting some options now for example if i want to open up game activity through my main activity then that is an explicit intent because i have specified that i have to open game activity i have specified the id of the component now if i want to send a message through my app 
then that is an implicit intent because I have not specified to whom I want to send the message or what component will handle that request. So that is an implicit intent. Now in this case Android system helps me out through which I can send message. Now for example you must have noticed the share icon inside the application. Whenever that icon is clicked, an implicit intent is raised and the Android system helps us out by specifying different apps that can handle our message so that I can choose from which app I want to send the message and the Android system handles it. Now let's see how we can open game activity through our main activity using explicit intent. Now first I will create game activity. Inside this Java folder I will go to this package, right click new, then activity, empty activity and I click finish. Now you can see that a new activity has been created. There's Java file, there's XML file for it. Then if I go and open the manifest file, I can see that there's a new activity added in the XML file as well. This Android manifest.xml file contains all the component listed in the application. If I want to create an activity or I have to create any service, then all those has to be listed inside this file. Android system understand which activity is present using this manifest file. Now let's get back to the main activity file. I'll write some code in the placeholder of custom code. Now I will write intent space i equal to new intent. Now this is an overloaded constructor. So I'll first pass on the context inside it. Now in place of context, you can pass your activity. So here I'm passing main activity dot this. Now I'll pass on the class name of the activity that I want to open. So I'll write game activity dot class. Now I'll use start activity method and I'll pass on the intent inside this. Now whenever user click that particular button, the main activity will go in background and game activity will open up. So this behavior is possible because of the explicit intent. We have specified the activity name. It will open up the game activity when the user clicks on the button of main activity. So that's how you use intent to perform some action inside the app. So that's all for this lecture. You can read more on our site cheesycode.com. There is an article for button click and intent. If you have any doubt, you can comment on our video. We'll surely help you out. Don't forget to subscribe us. Thanks for watching.